Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to be answering question number seven from January 2018 International A Level, the M1 Mechanics paper. Um, this question here is about statics. We're told, we've been told that there is a non uniform rod AB which has length six meters and mass eight kilograms. The rod, the rod rests in equilibrium in a horizontal position on two smooth supports C and D, where A to C is one centimeter and D to B is one, sorry, A to D is one meter and D to B is also one meter, as shown in figure three. The magnitude of the reaction between the rod and the support at D is twice the magnitude of the reaction between the rod and the support at C. The center of mass of the rod is at G, where AG is equal to X meters. Show that X equals 11 over 3. Okay, so basically, we know a few things here. One of the things we know is that it's a non-uniform rod. Now, a non-uniform rod, what that means is that the, the uh, mass is not um, evenly distributed amongst through the whole shape. So it does not act at its geometric center. If it was a uniform rod, then I could say exactly halfway along the rod, right in the middle of the rod, like three meters from the end, if it's six meters long, you would have the weight. You could say the weight acts from that point. Okay, you could say the weight acts, the center of mass is going to be exactly in its geometric center. But in this case, it's not. It's non-uniform. So we know that somewhere over here, Okay, is where the geometric center is. It says AG is equal to X meters. We have to prove it's 11 over 3. Okay, now we know that the reaction force at C is, well, we don't know what it is, but we know the reaction force at D is twice the reaction force at C. So if I call this R, the reaction at C is R, then the reaction at D is two times R. And as the reaction force at D is greater than the reaction force at C, then it's more likely that the, the, the center of mass is going to be closer to D because um, there's no other forces acting apart from the, you know, it's just the weight of the rod, and then the weight of the rod causes, of course, these reaction forces. And as the reaction force at D is greater than that at C, then it's, it's more likely for the uh, center of mass to be acting closer to D. And we can see that 11 over 3 is more, more than 3, so it is closer to D, as we can see from here. So we know that this is um, 8 G Newtons, the, the weight of the um, object, or the weight of the actual uh, rod. And we also know that the distance between G and A is, well, we have to prove it's 11 over 3, so we're going to call it X. It's X first, X meters. Okay, AG is equal to X meters. So this is the distance of the center of mass from A. So that those are all the forces that are acting upon this rod, which is an equilibrium. So if it's an equilibrium, then we can say that the forces acting up and down must be in balanced out. So the upward forces equal the downward forces. So what I could say from here is um, I can make an equation that R plus 2R is equal to the mass, which is 8G. So I can say 3R is equal to 8G. So therefore, I can say R is equal to 8G over 3. R is equal to 8G over 3. Okay, so that's one piece of information I can use to sort this problem out. The other, po the other thing that I can do is I can take moments. So for example, as I want to find what X is, I think it will be easier for me to use take A as my pivot so that I can take moments about A. If I take moments about A, I'll have things in terms of R and X, and I can already know what R is, uh, so therefore I can you know work out what X is. So if I take moments about A, now remember you can take moments about any way you want to, and because this is an equilibrium, okay, it's an equilibrium, that, that means that the, the total sum of all the moments is going to be zero from any point you want to take. So if I take moments about A, then I can consider the clockwise moments, which will be A to G times X, equals the anti-clockwise moments, which is going to be R times 1 plus 4 times 2R. The clockwise moments will be from 8G if A is a pivot, 
it's going to cause a clockwise rotation about A, and these two cause a anti-clockwise mo moment about A. So if I take moments about A, if I take moments about A, I can say here that, um, as I said, A G times X is equal to, then I'm going to have R times 1, force times the perpendicular distance, that's going to be R plus, and then I'm going to have 2R times 5, because you've got this distance is 5. So plus 2R times 5. So I'm going to get 8GX is equal to, that's going to be 11R, because that's 10R plus 1R, that's 11R. Okay, um, so now I can replace the R with 8G over 3. So I have 8GX equals 11 times 8 g over 3 now you can see the 8 g's will cancel out if i divide both sides by 8 g and we're left with x equals 11 over 3 which is what we have to show so x equals 11 over 3 um well the meters is already there so x is 11 over 3 so we've proved that x equals 11 over 3 and there's the answer to part a okay now for part b okay now for part b we're told that the support at C is moved to the point F on the rod, where AF is equal to 2 meters. Um, a particle of mass 3 kilograms is placed on the rod at A. The rod remains horizontal and in equilibrium. The magnitude of the reaction between the rod and the support at D is K times the magnitude of the reaction between the rod and the support at F. Okay, so there's some changes being made. This support has been moved along so that now it's two meters in. So now it's moved to the point F. There's a mass being added at A, okay, and that causes, of course, those changes causes the reactions at the supports to change. Okay, but the center of mass is still 11 over three meters away from A, and it's the weight of the rod is still eight G Newtons. So what I've done here is I've just made another diagram where I have modified it slightly. So I've now moved the, rep the, the support at C, to F, which is now 2 meters, so that's now 2 meters, and now that must be 3 meters, because it was 4 meters before, so now it's 3 meters, because it's 1 meter in, so between F and G is 3 meters, and um, of course between D and B is still 1 meter, so sorry, between F and D is 3 meters, not between F and G, between F and D is 3 meters, let's just make that clear. Okay, the distance between F and D is 3 meters, that is the 3 meters there. Okay, that's 3 meters. And, um, yeah, so this is still 11 over 3 meters away from there. Okay, so there we have all the, well, the changes in terms of where the support has gone. Now we have added a force or a weight at A. If we add a weight at A, that weight is how heavy? 3 kilometers, 3, 3 G, so it's three, 3 kilograms, so that's 3 G newtons is the weight. So a mass of 3 kilograms has been added at A, so that's 3 G newtons, a weight acting at A. Um, and tells us about the supports. Now the support, they told us at um, D is K times the magnitude of the reaction between the rod and the support at F. Okay, so if the, if the magnitude of the reaction between F and the rod is R, let's, be, let's call it R, R1 because it's different from the R in the first question. Um, this is going to be K times R1. Okay, so there's, we've got them in terms of each other. And we've got to find the value of K. All right, so let's do something quite similar. Let's first of all um, have an equation which involves the resolving of the forces. We know that the if I resolve the forces upwards, the upward and downward forces are equal to each other. So this time we have R1. plus k times r1 is equal to 3g plus 8g. Okay, so that's one equation that we have. So that's going to be, let's take out r as common, r1 times 1 plus k is equal to 11g. Okay, so we can say that r1 is equal to 11g over 1 plus k. We could leave it like that for now. All right, so that's uh, one equation. Then we can also, again, take moments. Now, if I take moments about D, I think that would be more sensible because I already have an equation with R with K in it. So if I can find what R is, 
okay, in terms of just G without the K there, then that might help us to solve this problem. So if I can get rid of this term with the K, so if I had to take moments about D, so if I take moments about D, let's see what happens. I'm going to take moments about D. I think that's more sensible in this case. Now, first of all, I've got to have all the distances from D. So I know that from A to D is 5 meters. So this, this distance between here and here must be 5. This distance is 5 minus 11 over 3 meters. And that's going to be 15 over 3 minus 11 over 3, which is 4 over 3. So this is 4 over 3 meters. Okay, this is 4 over 3 meters, this distance between G and D. Okay, um, so let's take moments. Now, the clockwise moments about D will be given, if you take think about uh, the, you know, how this would turn. Um, this, these two forces would cause um, moments which go this way. R1 will cause a clockwise moment about D. It would go this way. Okay, so this R1 times the distance, which is 3. So it's R1 times 3. So you've got... 3 times R1 is a clockwise moment, and the anti-clockwise moments were given by this 3G force and this 8G force. Now, the 3G force is 5 meters away um, from D. A is 5 meters away from D, so that's 5 times 3G. So that's 5 times 3G plus, and then the other clockwise mo anti clockwise moment will be the 8G force, which is 8G times 4 over 3. 8G times 4 over 3. You have plus 8G times 4 over 6. So 4 over 3 times 8G. Okay, so let's just simplify that first. So 3R1 equals, that's 15G, plus, and that's going to be 4 8 to 32 over 3G. You can add those together. That's like 45 over 3 plus 32 over 3. Let's just simplify that. That's 45 over 3G plus 32 over over 3G, that's going to give you 77 over 3G, so 3 R1 is equal to 77 over 3G. Now we know that R1 is equal to 11G over 1 plus K, so let's just replace that. So we we know that R1 is equal to 11G over 1 plus K, we, we worked that from the first equation we formed, so 3 times 11G over 1 plus K is equal to 77 over 3g. Now what we can do here is we can start simplifying. I know the g's will cancel out. Um, so I'm going to get 33 over 1 plus k equals 77 over 3. So let's just now uh, simplify this. Let's cross multiply. So we end up with 99, 99 over 77 equals 1 plus k. Now, 11 goes into both of these, so this is going to be 9 over 7 equals 1 plus k. So therefore, we can say k is equal to 9 over 7 minus 1, which is minus 7 over 7, which gives me 2 over 7. So k is equal to 2 over 7, and there's the answer to part b of this question. Okay, so that's uh, this question number 7 from January 2018, M1 International A-Level, done. Okay, thank you for watching. Other questions from this paper you'll find on this playlist that will be appearing over here. Other questions from statics um, in M1 you'll find in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel from this link and at the top of the page you'll find some other M1 paper you might be interested in watching. Thank you for watching and see you soon.